Hey everybody, it's your pal Drew Dracy. This is take four because some reason from out of the blue my camera froze up, turned green and stuck. It just froze up and I was on a pretty good groove. So here's hoping. Let's look at the gods of the internet to see if they will agree with me and my camera. Uh, okay, well first issue here is uh, Jigsaw, Man of a Thousand Parts. He was he came out in 1966 like many many publishers trying to cash in on the Batman TV show phenomenon and uh, it's actually not that bad uh, Hardy did a bunch of stuff they did a reprint it was an oversized reprint of Fighting American by Simon and Kirby uh, they were throwing everything out there but they were mostly a humor comic company and they outsold Marvel and DC easily how I'll show you later in this issue I'm not gonna drag it on so this guy's basically Plastic Man, uh, Elongated Man, Mr. Fantastic, except just he has these colors. I would think it'd be cool if they made a toy that would, like, you know, you can connect and make these real cool images and cages and shit. Uh, so, but this, it didn't last that long. That's a very interesting pose. It's almost like someone trying to be Kirby because of that hand. Uh, the art is not described, and I really have a strong suspicion that it was a dc freelancer who didn't want his name to be out because back then you were like out of the industry I like the little goodyear ad stuck in the middle of the story yes times are getting tough some at uh, around this era i'm a freak i'm a jigsaw so whoever saw this must have like read doom patrol or the early fantastic four or x-men because he for having those kind of uh feelings instead of celebrating so being celebratory, I felt like saying it a little smarter. Um, end of part two. Here we go. Harvey Comics, baby. All these comics monthly. Casper, Little Dot, Wendy, Richie Rich, Spooky, Sad Sack and Sarge, Baby Huey, Little Dot, Dotland, Little Lotta, Baby Huey Papa, <laughs> Nutsy, Little Sad Sack, Audrey, Devil's Kids, Tough Ghost, Sad Sack, Hot Stuff, Audrey and Melvin. Sold like crazy. Because they were still a very affordable, uh, you know, something to give the kids to do and read. And then they even did giant-sized ones. I and mean, that's how huge they were. Uh, so, back to the story. And, uh, pull your car around the building and it'll be 8.25. I don't know what that voice was. So, but I really like it. it almost The inking puts me in line of Joe Gila, but I could be totally wrong. Then, uh, well, here's here is the uh, the reason the uh, what do they call that the phrase? Uh, bah, 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 bah. The price of admission alone. Uh, Reed Crandall doing a science fiction story, and what's funny is that Alien. Take out the antenna. He looks just like those little toys that came out at the time. These little rubber figures, and they had a head like that, and you'd squeeze them, and the ears would pop out, and the uh, eyes would pop out and uh, they were pretty popular at the time. I don't know why, they were just goofy. They were just goofy. Goofy fun. We have Mr. Reed Crandall. I have, have to look up see if this is new Reed or old Reed. So, uh, I mean, of the time. Uh, also, <clears throat> our love story. Uh, return of John Romita to romance comics, which is quite a big deal, and, but it didn't last, unfortunately. He did DC uh, uh, comics, romance comics, for years and years and years and years. And he did some advertising as well. And then when Stan Lee wanted him to come back, uh, Stan couldn't meet the page rates of DC and all that. But once Marvel started making money, once the FF took off and Spider-Man and others, uh, he coerced uh, Ramita to come, come over. And he right away, they gave him like a couple of Daredevil issues that Kirby had laid out uh, several pages of. And uh, he was getting in the groove, and he said it was just really awkward to think like of fist fights and you know uh, all kinds of stuff uh, because that wasn't his thing. But the Kirby, you know, Stan had Kirby show him how to do <clears throat> do an action page. Um, this came out in '71 or so. It bombed big, uh, just like with the Marvel horror books. I did a chapter on why they. Uh, failed uh, the revival in 1970, but this is slightly different because um, while horror comics and stories were still big, actually they're getting big again in uh, small indie uh, movies. Like watch any history, uh, episode of Mystery Science Theater, and you'll know why. 
Um, so, uh, but it just wasn't happening. It was unsophisticated because women were becoming more liberated, and uh, there was a time where they didn't even make make near what the uh, their male counterparts made. And for a long time, <coughs> I mean, going back a ways, it's like women couldn't own banks. That it was a lot of really crazy shit that uh, you know uh, that was addressed. So here we go, John Basema, Frank Giacoya, baby. Boy, is that beautiful. I love the simple colors. See? Tells a, tells a story. I'm nagging you now. Um, and what's funny is John Basema said he loved doing Conan books. That is really smart. Uh, uh, um, when Byrne did the Scarlet Witch and made her uh, evil, he gave her this kind of collar. And it's really, it's actually pretty cool today. Um, John Basema said he always hated superheroes he uh loved barbarian story and mostly because you don't have to draw backgrounds that are you could freehand everything but he didn't say anything about disliking romance so i i guess he just despite his brilliance at superheroes he just hated it <laughs> gene cole and john ramita two artists who render in pretty much contrary styles um this is pretty cool. And it's really forward thinking to have one of the chapters be an African American couple. I mean, that's really. I mean, DC was still so skittish about that stuff. Beautiful face. Um, what's interesting is how they, they blend. It's like that could easily have just been a John Romita panel, but we know he didn't redraw anything in here. He inked Jane Colon. Now, that's a very Jane Colon uh, image right there. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'll tell you this. Sales were dropping because comics went from 12 bucks to 13 bucks. No, no, no. Stop that. <laughs> it was 12 cents to 15 cents. And uh, Stanley's basically begging the reader. As far as I'm concerned, these are Marvel's best. Pencilers, one, two, three. Inkers, Drew Dracy, two, three. Hey, man, those are my favorite types of plots. These are the kinds of yards that turn me off, mister. Wow, these are the types of mags you should do more of. If I were you, Stan, uh, these are the changes I'd make at Marvel. <laughs> That's kind of sad <laughs> and funny. And uh, they should do one now in the comics. So, James Steranko, they have all of his Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Captain America story in print. And there's a couple of handful of books. A couple of books he did that, uh, a couple of X-Men that really sucked because he was just starting off. And then he did stuff like this. He did a Tower of Shadows number one, which had it. The artwork was high contrast. Like, there was no holding lines, just heavy, heavy shadows. Think of Frank Miller doing Sin City, like, 40 years later. Uh, now, full-out Peter Max, baby. Simple contour lines with shadows. And the coloring is beautiful. I'd love to see it in better quality. Uh, but also, Steranko, he colored these pages to accommodate for the color. He was a very smart production guy. Like, would you have guessed this guy in the middle here was a Stranko drawing? No. That's how brilliant he is about that stuff. He's throwing all those colors, like psychedelic colors. I'm almost high touching the newsprint. Oh, man. I caught a buzz. Now, that alone could be a poster. I love the contour of the guitar where the uh, conversation, or, you know, the uh, blurb is. So much goodness. I love her stance there in that panel up front. And the curly hair. Just so much going on. And, you know, he commits to the whole thing. And this is all new territory for uh, comics. And Stranko was playing around a bit. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Wow. I got this for like five, six bucks in a back issue. That Jigsaw, I, I bought it for two bucks. I was over at Dave's Comics and Collectibles in Fayetteville. And he has a ton of two dollar books you got a ton of cd cdg graded books uh and in the middle tons of new books got every book coming out. and if you need a bowling ball or a bowling ball hole drilled he does that too he loves bowling it's so cool um mr miracle okay when uh, kirby left to go to marvel i've said this before try to truncate it <sighs> he was going to do return of the gods and uh which is something he was obsessed on at that time i guess it became the internal eternals because marvel came out with Return of the New Gods, just out of spite because the whole book is shitty. Um, Mr. Miracle was brought back, and I would say this is good enough to be canon in the Kirby-verse. Uh, it's just that good. It's, 
Stephen Hart, Marshall Rogers, like right before they did Batman. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. And they, I don't know what it, oh, they never brought back Forever People, at least not till 1998 when Mar Mark Evanier and Paris Cullens came on. Give me a second, I gotta take a drink or something. <coughs> Just talk among yourselves. That's better. <laughs> okay, well, uh, Mr. Miracle, uh, the only other thing I consider canon post New Gods is this um, Simonson's, Simonson's Orion series, John Byrne's uh, New Gods series, everything else, forget about it. Um, and uh, about Forever People. Yeah, it didn't come out until 1988 uh, with, uh, I said, Evan Year and Paris Collins. But let me tell you something dirty old secret of mine. I hate the forever people. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. It's just so. It's like having your great grandfather relate to a twelve-year-old. And I'm. I love Kirby. I'll look at it for the art. That's for sure. But the stories and the it just. Ugh. So when I reread the, all those books again, I'll probably just look at the images of forever people. But it just. I was try, trying too hard to be flower power from a guy who's uh, a generation before that, you know. And, uh, you know, I'm sorry. You can leave hateful comments below if you want. Or you can say, hey, Drew, you're an idiot. Not hateful. You can just say, Drew, you're a jerk. So, uh, I, you know, it won't be the first time. So, Steve, uh, Steve Englehart, Marshall Rogers getting ready for the Batman uh, story that they would do in Detective Comics Eclipse. John Workman on the letters. He's been around a long time. John Workman did his great cover for... The Comics Journal number 37, which had Han Solo and then a Star Wars collage in the back. It's uh, nothing but blue and black, and it's glorious. How about that? Start right out. Now, it's not Terry Austin inking. It's actually Vince Coletta. But at the time, uh, Marshall was super tight on his pencils, so it would be like near impossible to fuck him up. And he probably laid down the... the uh, I mean, I, I think Rogers might have like gotten the art back and added his own tones to it. Is that something you just pass off to somebody else? Mm -hmm. Let's see, look at all that stuff. And I really think New Gods, with the care of Engelhart and, and uh, Rogers, really made it work in a lot of ways. Eh. Hostess, hostess Twinkies. Just really great graphics here. And he's stuck to a missile. He has one of his little tricks. Little teeny tiny bombs. Such a weird... That's just a shadow from where they're hiding safely behind uh, from the explosion. But yeah, see... You wouldn't see... Um, you wouldn't see Coletta do something like this naturally. I bet you every little nuance was done there by uh, Marshall Rogers. And, and I would know because I've done that. I've done trace jobs as well as uh, other gigs. And, uh, you know, as long as they look, I always say, if you trace, trace with grace. So Bart is like uh, been mind controlled by Granny Goodness. How about that? Wow. And, uh, you know, it, I read it, and Stephen Englehart, he even uses a little play on words like Kirby does, but he doesn't go, he himself said Kirby sort of had a tenure for dialogue. And there are times where I feel that way, but as I get older, I'm like, I get it. He's not trying to impress us with his witticisms. Ah, man, man, man. Oh, boy, oh, boy. When this came out, you know, a young boy is going to love this book. There's no way you can defy the power of two images of the most unique character in comics ever a character that has yet to been translated into live action properly uh and they're gonna try it again i'm sure they'll fuck it up again but uh god it's great buckler and joe Sinnott, who stayed on the book for a long time until john byrne took over completely um and it turns out look at the lettering is great joe rosen who i think is sam you know, what is his name sam rosen's son whatever there's Archon, who first appeared in Avengers, designed by uh, John Masema. And what's funny is I would draw my comics a lot like this. Like, I love this Human Torch, but he's so... It's like he's... Like, when you see people competitively bodybuilding and they 
flex every muscle. Uh, Buckler seems to do that a lot, but it's okay. They're superheroes. So he's trying to explain counter Earth versus the fifth dimension. La 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 la. And uh, I was going to make some joke about the fifth dimension, but I don't know. I love him. So, a flashback. If a flashback looks good, then that's not a big deal. That is really great. Uh, Reed Richards fighting. You just don't see a lot of that. Don't see him cut loose. There he's holding his arm. And I have another episode where they spent four actual years uh, from 76 to 1980 for, uh, or something like that, to where he lost his powers gradually. And there were all these little hints he dropped. Uh, blah, 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 blah. But it's actually pretty decent. I mean, I liked it because Fantastic Four, oh, they kick out the landlord. He's bitching and moaning. Ah, now the two things. The ones from Counter Earth is actually Reed Richards turned into the thing. Wow, man, oh man, oh man. Geronimo. So they're like, mm, what now, Reed, baby? Man, I wanted this. I wanted all of these. <laughs> but uh, okay, well then the Earth Ben Grimm or the Counter Earth version of Ben Grimm, who is not the thing, shows up. How? <laughs> Where did he come from? I mean, other than being like a visual nod. So why would he be there? How did he get there? So I don't. Know, maybe he felt like he was missing out on the fun. I don't know. Love that pose. And you know, you'll notice is, you know, there are many, many issues where he swiped Kirby. Buckler did, and it kind of worked to an extent. But what was funny is that in the reprints, you would see some of the panels that he copied, but this storyline, to my knowledge, has no uh, tracings, and I'm 100% sure on that. That is a great panel there. And these are guys from Fifth Dimension. They they were in this obscure Human Torch story that was pretty crappy. Okay. Eh. Eh. Okay. And for some, somebody else inked this page. I can't figure out why, because look how uh, the thing's pieces are it's like broken glass. And they meet Guard, a cosmic hockey player. Uh, they had a Silver Surfer. They had the Black Racer who's on skis. They got this guy. They got Terox. They got, um, you know, it's just so goofy. I don't know if he's ever been brought back, but it's like, it's wild. It's some wild-ass shit. Now, Going back many, many years ago, Sergeant Fury and his Howling Commandos. I got this pretty cheap. It was uh, in a terrible shape. Maybe I paid five bucks for it. I don't know. Um, yeah, like that spine. I don't care about that. As long as it stays intact for the most part, even if the cover falls off, I can live with it. Um, uh, written by Stan Lee, drawn by Jack Kirby. Uh, I think Kirby probably had a lot more to do with the storytelling because he was an infantryman. So he knows. He knows. He's seen a lot of ugly action go on and stan was in uh he was in as a writer he actually had to do like uh flyers for how soldiers can avoid syphilis or how to treat it that kind of stuff i'm not making it up i'm not making it up that's not stupid but you know what it's so george bell slash rusus rusus who is the colorist of all these books back then it's so friggin ugly but with the colors and everything and it, it being a war comic I accept it. Like when he did, he did like a half a year of Fantastic Four when the thing in the Hulk fought. Dreadful. Pure dreadful. Love those flouting Kirby heads. Flouting? Floating. Okay. Get this. Same month. Issue three of the Avengers. Even the little bullet head there. He changed, actually, he changed his costume before the uh, issue he came red. <laughs> Sarge got a day, tra la 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 la. <laughs> He's a little shaven. I was jagging around with him. Get out of here! But it's weird how the spotting of blocks is so weird. It's almost like Rusus goes dap, 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 scribble, 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 and fills in the scribbles. And it's almost like a, uh, I don't know what you'd call it. <laughs> it's almost like a paint by number sort of thing. I need the right way to say it. It's sort of like connect the dots. That's the thing I'm thinking of. 
It looks like those guns. I mean, Kirby doing his stuff. And, uh, you know, the ritual team, they're raising hell and stuff like that. I'm showing the bad guys what for. Come on! That's more like it. Gabe throws a good old grenade. Takes a whole bunch of money. Another one. Uh, African Americans weren't around and they didn't exist in comics 1963. So, and you know, hats off for Stan for being so open minded. And gradually, you had Robbie Robertson, who, uh, uh, I mean, Joe Robertson, who uh, was in uh, second in command at the Daily Bugle with, uh, it was usually John, J. Jonah Jameson's Conscience. So, look, that came out too the same month. What a trip. What a trip. So, they're fighting, they're fighting, fight, 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 fight. But, um, something bad happens. <sighs> Soon the smoke of battle clears as a small landing party arrives from the sub and then on the double, men, you've got to get to the ship before additional tanks arrive. Easy with that stretcher, sailor. Poor Junior, the sub arrived for him too late. Sarge, what's the scoop? How bad did Junior get it? Dum dum. He won't be coming back. So long, little pal. At least he went out the way he would have wanted to. Wonder which one of us will be next. What's the diff? We're all expendable. Uh, that's just really sobering stuff, uh, you know, for our free wheeling comic book. And uh, Weapons of War, and uh, Kirby knew everything. He just threw that in there, and that's just amazing stuff. I know, I'm sure Sergeant Rock had a lot of that kind of stuff too, but uh, I never read, I read some Sergeant Rock. But uh, Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. This was a, a tremendous fun, and uh, finally, on the fifth run, my episode is done, done. I better leave before. Oh, oh, please hit like and subscribe. Please, please, please. And hit the bell for notifications. And please, please, please share with somebody. You know, a comics fan, like from way back, who would love this stuff, young or old, I don't care. Uh, and leave comments below. Leave corrections. If there's something I did that was a turn off, or <laughs> pretend I'm that letters page, uh, that bulleted page where it says, what? Do you like to see our stories? What do you what do you like to do, Drew? What do we not want to see Drew do? Okay, and uh, hey, that's it. Uh, bye.